My name is Tony Ariola. I'm from the north side of Chicago, from Rogers Park. I own Howard Street Gallery in Evanston. Despite street art's recent emergence into the mainstream culture, the struggle to maintain its legitimacy in the eyes of the law is far from over. The law is a hindrance to the growth of the street art culture and is the underlying reason behind the closing of Ariola's Howard Street Gallery, which has been a haven for Chicago street artists amidst the harsh criminalization and stigma associated with street art. I've been involved with street art since probably the late 90s, and then I, I had an older brother who kind of got me into photography. So we've all been with the underground art scene in Chicago for like a long time. A lot of the art that we display here at Howard Street Gallery, it's a lot of local artists or artists from Chicago that I felt like needed more recognition. A lot of street artists too as well. We also do clothing with most of them as well. And they'll develop their own t-shirts and sweaters and we'll sell them at the openings. One of the other main things that we wanted to do was sell spray paint. Spray paint is banned in Chicago. Street art is known for its controversial messages, which often lead people to affiliate the art with gang activity. You know, street art and gangs are pretty much two separate urban cultures. They sometimes mingle in between each other. In this neighborhood, there's always been gangs around. There's always been gang violence in this part of town since the 80s. For myself, I don't know, graffiti and street art always had that uh, anti-establishment type of mentality. I, I feel like that kind of feeds it, keeps it going. So there's always an underlying message of inequalities in this world and try to open people's eyes. There's always things hindering street artists' work, whether it's family, government, police. Chicago is actually probably one of the hardest cities to illegally paint graffiti. Many artists featured in the Howard Street Gallery have had rough encounters with the rigid anti-graffiti laws in Chicago. My name is Vincent James. I'm from Chicago, Northside, Rogers Park. I've been painting illegally for about maybe 10 years now. Most of the work that I have is predominantly abandoned buildings, photography, paintings. To my first real arrest, I was 16. I got arrested on a felony graffiti charge for doing a scribe on a window in Wicker Park. And they chased me down and I served six months for it. My mom, uh, she hated what I did for a long time. And then I turned 18 and I stopped getting arrested. <laughs> the young was pictured on that billboard. Uh, he's, he's in jail right now for graffiti. Um, these are good kids just, just being themselves and doing what they want, you know, but not being like overly aggressive or anything like that. But the system is just trying to make an example. And Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. The youth is what keeps things interesting, and, uh, and a lot of innovation comes from uh, younger artists. But at the same time, we also teach them, we also school them. Yeah, definitely a lot of young kids came here from all over, and they pretty much came to hang out and pretty much learn you know, some history and learn some skills and techniques. I think it was a great thing. You know, We, we linked up with a lot of different young artists, and I know myself that I'm going to be able to see a lot of them grow and, and develop into other art, art forms. Ariola has witnessed significant growth of street art culture since he began his career, and despite difficulties, he remains hopeful that young and old artists alike will continue to break down the social boundaries of street art. It's pretty much people from different cultures and different, different economic backgrounds. It, there's poor people and rich people, and it, it all depends on skill. Yeah, I hope it keeps growing. It's an it's a actual art form. It's an urban culture. It's, it's folk art, basically. It's passed down from generation to generation. It's, it's all over the world. There's always something trying to stop creativity from happening, but the human will is strong. People do what they want. People want to express themselves.